Some people who grow their own tomatoes, if tomatoes are out of season, they say they can't even buy them in the store anymore. They just don't taste the same. The flavor is amazing. I take a lot of pride in it. I have a couple of gardeners in this garden, for example, that they're living almost entirely off of what they are growing in their plots so that they can use their other fixed income to pay for their housing and their utility bills. And those gardeners are the first ones to take excess of what they're growing and share it with other people. And it always comes back to them in spades. They just love it. What got me excited about this community garden was the opportunity to work with Mary Petit. When I saw that Mary was starting this garden, it was actually a real contentious process for her. The initial place that she was thinking about, uh, a lot of the community was really, really angry and quite frankly, scared of having the garden. One of the friends of the garden, I call them friends of the garden, uh, who's not gonna garden here, but wanted to be part of this. Um, she rented a trailer for her truck drove to Indio, which is about three hour drive, and in 110 degrees, loaded it up with donated plants in anticipation of us getting this other garden site. And she's coming back and said, where can I, can I drop them off? And I said, we don't have the other site. She forgot to ask me in that interim t time period about what happened to the other site. So she goes, well, I know the people that are on the Pacific Christian Center site. Let's see if they have some space for us. So this is the spot that basically Ken Becker and his wife, Joan Becker, Ken's the executive director, Pacific Christian Center, he said, yeah, you can stage things here. I counted the plants that Holly had, 500 plants, and we had no place to plant them, so I put a call out for people to foster the plants until we could find it. And Ken said, what are you doing? I told him, he says, why don't you have your garden here? I said, seriously? to make a proposal to the board, which I did. Three weeks later, we got the approval, and my gardener said, we want to plant for the cool season. We missed the spring, we want to plant for the fall. I said, okay, it's gonna take about six weeks to get everything in the ground, let's do it. And we spent six weeks, oh gosh, maybe three, four, five days a week, certainly part of that the weekend, and we put this garden together. When I work with Mary, and I see how she works with the rest of the community. Ego is put outside. You know, we, we're not here to, to talk about what experiences we have and how we're better at. What we're here to do is work together to feed as many people as possible. We've helped, and, we, and we've all agreed to call them seedlings of our program, um, two school gardens, they're private schools, a Presbyterian church, and uh, a rehabilitation and care center and those seedling programs have been done. They all have their own stakeholders. Um, it, and the uh, Upland Rehabilitation and Care, we actually provide people to help manage it. Through an interesting turn of events, we got connected to a small family farmer in South Ontario who suggested that we could have a community garden on their farm. And so that was the second one, which in October we had the ribbon cutting, and we call that the garden on the farm. And that's the second incredible edible community garden. Everybody's told me that it's just been very meditative, um, very spiritual place, and sometimes they will just come here and sit and just enjoy it. So it's far more than what I had expected. I guess it's what I had hoped, but wasn't sure if we'd achieve it, because you can't make it happen, it just happens. And I found the best thing to do is you bring people together and they make it happen.